Hello good people. I thought I would uh, give you a report on how my International Shipping Day went because some of you have specifically asked me to document this procedure. Um, it may be helpful to others uh, either doing a sizable domestic move or an international move in particular. Um, you know people tend to search these videos on based on the, the title so somebody going through the same thing uh, may find this helpful or somebody who's curious about moving um, might also find it helpful as well so uh, I as I stated in a previous video I hired an inter a reputable international moving company that moves door to door um, you can if you want um, you know hire your own or rent your own a container there are different uh, two different basic sizes uh, if you've got enough stuff to fill a container, like a 10 by 20, um, then or a 10 by 40, I think is the bigger one. If you're taking loads of furniture, then that might be an option for you. However, um, you have to do a lot more of the paperwork, and you have to sort out, um, you know, port customs stuff. Um, I hired a company that does all that. They do all of the paperwork except for one form that you're responsible for. They also pack everything on the um, origin end, uh, take care of all the transportation to shipping container, uh, and then I, I deliver it from the port to your final destination. So it's a little bit more money, but I thought it was worth it to do that. Plus, having done some research, uh, there are less nightmares involved uh, in the, the second option. The first option, uh, my sister recently moved to the UK. They went with the first option and they got hit with all kinds of hidden charges. The stuff is late um, on arrival. Um, there's just lots of um, headaches that come along with uh, that cheaper option. It sounds better on paper and on your pocketbook, but um, I think the second option, hiring a company to you know go from A to B and do all points in between, including managing all of your uh, paperwork just takes a lot of the stress out of the situation so the company decided um, to do it on two consecutive days this, this was their decision not mine um, the first day um, two ladies arrived they're contracted out by the shipper uh, the local people and they just sh uh, pack all of your small goods so they were very um, thorough um, good at what they do. One of the ladies said she'd been doing it 38 years. So they come through and they basically pack all your small goods, uh, either in the boxes that you have them in or they um, provide their own. So they show up with tons of different cardboard configurations and rolls of uh, packing paper uh, and they do all that. So they packed all my glassware, uh, not much, I only took a couple of boxes of breakables, but they, they packed all that. Um, and then they pack your pictures, you know, your picture frames. They have special boxes for that. And they went through and repacked some of my book boxes because they were rather heavy. They were the big banker's box. Uh, and they um, put them into smaller, easier to handle uh, boxes. And that took them probably about uh, three or four hours um, to do that. And then they, um, they don't, I should tell you, they don't account for the bigger stuff. So I only have one piece of furniture going. Um, they didn't do anything with that and they also didn't do anything with the instruments that I had in hard shell cases. They said the second day movers would take care of that. So here's the first uh, little bit of a, a worry or concern is that they come, they only do partial part of your stuff, the smaller stuff, and then they provide a, a bill of lading or a shipping bill uh, just for that stuff which then gets given to the um, people who come on the second day that are responsible for your bigger stuff. Uh, another thing that um, I found a bit annoying is that uh, I was shipping from two destinations, mine, which is was 80% of the stuff, and then from my daughter's house, uh, about 20% of the stuff. Uh, and they weren't quite as thorough at the second de destination where I wasn't at, uh, where I wasn't present. So, for instance, on, in, at my destination, they asked if uh, what what were the um, boxes with the um, valuables in them, and they didn't ask that at the second destination, which caused a bit of a headache later. 
Another thing that kind of baffled me, uh, I was expecting them to be very thorough in their descriptions of what's in the box since this is going through customs. It was kind of lax, it was kind of vague. Um, there were many boxes where they just labeled papers uh, and they could have been book boxes, they could have been, um, you know, journals, um, you know, even stuff like uh, DVD, not DVD, I didn't take any DVDs, uh, CDs uh, and records, they didn't dis distinguish between, they just put uh, CDs on everything. Uh, also, they, every th instrument that I packed, they just called a guitar. They didn't care whether it was a violin, a viola, a harp, it didn't matter, they just put guitar for everything. Um, so that was a little bit surprising. I thought it would be a bit more thorough, so the, the box descriptions are a bit vague, and I wonder how that will uh, impact going through customs. Um, so those were two uh, issues I had with the, the first day, movers of the small goods. The second day, uh, two guys showed up uh, and they did all the bigger stuff. The first thing they did is they went through uh, and grabbed all my guitars in hard shell cases and they wrapped them in this bubble wrap paper. Uh, and this is a company policy. I asked them anything whether it's furniture, whether it's, um, you know, a, a large item like a, a guitar or a keyboard, uh, in my case, uh, everything gets wrapped in this brown paper that has small bubble wrap on one side, which gives a little bit of uh, protection to the cases, uh, which is a good thing. So they went through, it took them a couple of hours because they had to wrap, you know, a bunch of guitars that I had in hard, hard shell cases. They also wrapped my bed frames and, and my, my um, bed mattress, um, which surprised me, but they do that with all furniture. If we would be taking furniture, they would wrap it as well, which I suppose keeps it, helps it from getting nicked uh, and scraped and scratched and that sort of thing. So um, I didn't mind it. I thought that was a rather good policy. Um, and then they load everything onto the truck, including all the stuff inventoried on the first day. Um, but they only provide a uh, bill of lading or a shipping bill for the stuff that they actually wrapped. Um, so a bit of annoyance was I, um, when I asked them for a paperwork with a final box count, they said that on their paperwork there was just the 39 boxes or so that they, or items that they wrapped themselves, and they, that I should have paperwork for the first day, which I did have. They emailed me a um, um, shipping uh, um, invoice, not invoice, but itemized uh, shipping, a bill of shipping for the first day. And I had to manually add them together to get a final box count, which was a bit annoying. I did point that out to the company. Um, yes, I realized that they were packed on two separate days. However, that was your choice, not mine. Uh, as far as the customer is concerned, he's just doing an international uh, shipment. Um, and he wants something to show all of the goods that are being transported. The fact that you broke it up into two days is is your logistics, not not the um, the customers. Um, and then um, I said, you know, I've been dealing with shipping and receiving for my own company, for various companies, and it's pretty normal to have uh, pa paperwork with a final box tally, especially when one single truck shows up and pulls away with all your stuff. Um, so that was one major annoyance that I did point out and I said maybe as a point of customer service just add an extra document to your list that has a final box tally just just so the the person shipping the goods knows that everything made it on the truck and the and the people he's shipping it with have a final tally of all the items and boxes um, that they're shipping um, I thought that was f a fairly normal uh, request um, so that was one thing that I found a bit annoying. The, the second thing um, was when I signed the paperwork, the destination just said UK, it didn't have my destination address on it. Uh, I felt a little bit uncomfortable with that. I, I like to be very thorough. I like to know that they know exactly where it's going and that should be on the um, paperwork. Um, the explanation was that at this at the, des at the origin end, they don't do that, that gets added. Um, you know, when it when the stuff goes to the warehouse and the um, um, parent shipping company that you're doing everything th through uh, um, adds that to the paperwork. 
which is fine if that's their procedure. Um, the guy said he would add it just to give me peace of mind. I said it wasn't about peace of mind. It's about knowing that every everything is tickety boo. That um, you know, um, th this shipment is going to this place. Uh, it's not just about my comfort levels. It's it's to make sure that there are no issues um, with the final destination or anything like that. Um, so that was a little bit annoying. I did have the previous issue of having to add value added items um, from day one onto the day two paperwork, which was a bit of a uh, consternation for the second driver who said he couldn't be responsible for stuff he hadn't packed uh, and I told him well the people who came on the first days didn't give us the opportunity to declare uh, items at the second destination I know this is all very technical but I'm giving a um, you know a list of things they did well and things that I found slightly annoying or confusing um, not just for your edification but also to keep a record for myself as this shipment is still in, in transit, um, not paid for yet. So um, yeah, those were the kind of annoying things. Other than that, the physical um, uh, carry out of the uh, job itself was pretty good. Uh, these were uh, two hardworking guys. They loaded up that truck uh, uh, and didn't take any breaks, didn't mess around, didn't stop to smoke. Uh, it was, you know, all business. Um, and, um, uh, you know, they checked on me with anything, um, you know, uh, with, without just guessing, you know, they asked me if I wanted this box or this wrapped, uh, that kind of stuff. So I, I was quite pleased with their uh, service and I tipped them, I gave them a cash tip accordingly uh, and also um, to sort of uh, encourage them to take care of those one or two issues that um, I thought were a bit lacking. And of course, when you give somebody a cash tip, you, you're more likely to get them to follow through on it. There's a bit of um, incentive. So hopefully those couple of things that I found a bit annoying uh, will get remedied. Um, you know, tipping's a weird thing for me. Uh, I just spent two weeks in Ireland and England and there are no tips whatsoever. You don't tip restaurants or servers. It's just not part of their culture. Um, you know, I guess waiters and waitresses get paid on the same scale as everyone else so uh, tipping them and not tipping say your postman or, or um, your dog walker or you know the guy that um, delivers your milk um, it, you know there's no distinction between them so it, it's an odd sort of US custom that never took hold over there um, so when these guys showed up my neck I didn't even think about tipping them that's sorry the two ladies on the first day and then my son-in-law pointed out, "Is are we supposed to tip them? And uh, I had to Google it. And it is quite normal um, to tip these people, uh, give them a cash tip, because uh, of course they're getting paid through the uh, company and um, you know they're providing a service that is, quote, tippable. So that's something I learned from that. Um, and I did um, um, tip the drivers on the second day. My, my son-in-law tipped them, the, the people on the first day. So we did do a cash tip even though uh, <laughs> it's not something that, um, not because I'm tight or um, cruel, but it's not something that comes readily to mind. Um, you know, I don't get tipped for the services I provide. Um, so I, I always find it difficult to know who gets a tip and who doesn't and what constitutes, um, you know, tipping etiquette. It's always a bit confusing to me. I mean, the people that bag groceries um, at the grocery store now, people who bag groceries, why aren't they tipped? Um, you know, the people who serve you at the window of your fast food restaurant, why aren't they tipped? They're low paid, um, you know, and so on. So uh, yeah, that was one little quirk that I had to um, uh, adjust to, but apparently it's a thing, at least in this country, in the USA. So. Uh, I thought I would add that. But anyway, on the whole, a pretty clean two-day experience. Um, fairly painless, except for a couple of those logistic issues. I'm also waiting for the final inventory, which I need to apply for my customs document, the one document I'm responsible for. So I'm now waiting uh, for the company to send me a uh, final uh, inventory of all the goods in the shipment. I don't know how they're going to do that since the labels were so vague, but maybe it just stays vague. I don't know. Um, and then also the bill. 
And the way I think the bill goes is um, you pay half up front, uh, so that'll be as soon as I get the bill, and then uh, the second half upon delivery. And I'm anticipating somewhere between eight and 10,000, so it's not an unsubstantial bill, it's gonna be a chunk. Uh, but anyway, that was my experience. Um, hopefully it's helpful and not too boring for people. Um, but there you go, there it is. See you next time.